What, what? Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Frick Squad Show. Let's shoot them. Yeah, let's get this. This is just straight off the cuff. We're making this happen. I literally met this guy about two weeks ago, but he's very talented. He's a hell of a human. He's very... Man, let's just get right in the way. Bandamount, how you doing, man? Let's shoot him. Hey, this Bandamount. How you doing, man? How you doing? How you doing? We up on here. Yeah, dude. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. This is wild. So, Bandamount, um, he lives in my apartment building. We met straight off the cuff. Um, actually, it was because of another guy who lives in our apartment building. Um, he was being kind of wild, <laughs> to say the <laughs> least. And then me and Bandamount just got talking. He let me know he's done a bunch of filming. He actually, I believe you sell services as well. Like yeah. you'll help people record. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And then you're big into music, specifically rapping, right? Yeah. yeah if I get people in the band of booth, I got a band of booth. Um, and I'm actually a producer. I mix and master music. So, um, and I also, I'm also an artist. But um, yeah. So where did you get the name Band Amount from? Well, uh, band amount is actually um, something that I, I felt that's what I was aiming for because, you know, the money. And within money, I want bands. So I just was like, okay, that's what I want, bands, that amount. So band amount, and that's what picture I seen. So that's why I call myself band amount pictures. Nice. Fuck yeah. So always after getting it. I always thought it was kind of along the lines of Paramount, you know, the filming. Yep. So Actually, um, I was watching the Paramount. I was watching the uh, Paramount thing come through. Yeah. And I actually seen it. <laughs> and I was looking at it. And I, and I, and I actually, I said, Band Amount. And then that's how I actually really caught, you know, my eye of the thing. Because if you actually see my intro, that's how I came on. Instead of the stars, it's like the money. And it's actually overflowing in the <laughs> river, over the mountains and everything, just like the stars. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a crazy story of how I even came about. All right. Yeah, no, that's so wild, because I'm glad you actually tied those two together at some point as well. I just thought I was going to sound stupid for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, speaking, so, Paramount sort of things, Band Amount, you're into filming. Correct. How long have you been filming for? Uh, I've been filming for uh, about five years now. On and off, I've been filming before five years with little cameras, but I was just playing around with it, so I mean, I, I, I don't really count that, but... Um, with an actual DSLR camera, I've been filming for five years. Okay, what did you start off with? Um, when I well, as far as it, before when I was young, I used to start off with the little um, Polaroid little uh, cameras they had. I actually started off with those, and I had a video uh, production thing I was doing around the neighborhood called. We on one videos, and what I was doing was going around having everybody shout out my artist name because I was an artist at first, going off of the name Seasick originally, and then I um, end up transitioning into this name. But um, starting off, I used to just shoot videos uh, with the Polaroid, and then I grew up to you know leave off of the uh, filming and just got the rapping, and then I just thought about you know want to just. I want to get in the film more because I don't want to pay someone else to shoot my music videos. And so I was like, "Wow, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to pay him no more to shoot my music videos." He, he, he kind of taxed me, you know. I'm about to learn it. I'm about yeah. to learn it, and I'm about to critique it, and just like you know, have something else, another key to get into the doors that I'm trying to get into. No, that's definitely, I think, a really smart move. You just taking out yourself, like you get full control of the product you're putting out there. Right. Like, mm -hmm. that's a big thing. And then, as well as, it just showcases your talent as an artist as well. It's not just limited to one domain. You're able to branch out. And right. I think that's really impressive. As well as, because then you can start selling your services, too. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of, like, branched on to being an artist. Because I've been, I mean, I've been an artist since I was eight years old now. And I'm tw tw going on 26. So I've been an artist for 18 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I've been doing it for a long time. I never stopped. Never. Wait, so you started when you were eight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was, did you start doing? Um, the day that I started rapping, I can still remember the same day. Um, it was, I was trying to meet my dad, who I never really met. So for my first time ever, who I never met or talked to, I talked to him when I was eight years old. So when I finally talked to him, 
all I heard was like, damn, get your mom back on the phone. You know what I'm saying? Get your damn mom back on the phone, you know, stuff like that. And that's the first words I ever heard him say. So it kind of shot me down. And then I went down, st- downstairs to cry. My older brother, Wayne, he he was like, hey, bro, come here. You show me this Jay-Z song. It's a Jay-Z song called uh, Daddy, Where Have You Been? You know, mm-hmm. it's with uh, him and Benny Siegel. And I was listening to that with him. And my, I was listening to all that. that. That calmed me down, listening to that continuously. And he was teaching me, man, you got to you gotta use your pain and put it into writing it and, and making it rhyme like this. And, and it really, like, it just seemed like that day, it just kind of put me to a whole nother realm in life. Because since then, I just been on, okay, this is what I'm going to be. This is what I'm about. And this is how I'm going to get here. And I've been continuing this path right now. I'm still continuing. Dude, that's a hell of a fucking lesson to learn at eight years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yo, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. That just blows me away that you had to go through that, especially. Yeah. But I mean, I'm glad you were able to turn it into such a positive yeah. and be able to start trucking forward. So did you start writing right away then? Yep, right away. I wrote a whole song called, my first song ever was called Hey Dad. I'm like, I- I'm trying to think how it goes. I was so young. Hey, Dad, where you been? Oh, you never been around on Father's Day, not even my birthday. You left me when I was two, when I didn't even know you. So, 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 I was like eight years old, you feel <laughs> me? It was popping back then, you know? That was how Dude. rap was, too. So, you know what I'm saying? It, it was, Well, being you know? for, for being eight, that's a hell of a thing to be putting out. Yo, I don't even want to look at my schoolwork from yep. when I was eight. Like, mm-hmm. And I wrote that whole song the same day, like the same night. It's crazy. I wrote a whole song, three verses long. Three pages long, and ever since then, I, I just had the powers. It's like I had the powers of something just in my head, just just helping me, you know, write something, you know. Yeah. 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 Like, have you ever tried to branch out into other realms or other realms of mm-hmm. writing? Like, you know, like poetry, like we talked about earlier, and mm-hmm. creative Correct. writing, like. Like I, I like doing a lot of pop too. I like I like I I, I want to really branch more into. Doing a lot of more pop music because I like I like pop music, I like pop music. Um, uh, I, I even explore into R and B music. You know, um, I, I got I can hum a little bit, so I ain't, all the tune can help me a little bit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I try to get into the R and B a little bit, but you know, I try to kind of be like a, a sandwich type of rapper where it's just like you get so many different flavors, you know, in one. I'm different flavors each layer. So what do you like about the pop flavor then? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, what do you like about pop music? Because I just get okay. down with how happy all the tunes are, like how high pitch. Like, you know, it's always a good time kind of music. I, I kind of like the feeling. I, I, I like the feeling because I, I know um, I did a concert. It was at Common Ground. It was a big concert, and it was a pop music um it was a uh, super duper Kyle there, and uh, he showed me love. I was on stage with him, uh, recorded him live. It was just so, it was so lit, and just to see how big and how powerful uh, his music was towards that audience, and how it felt at that moment. That it was just so big to me. It just always was an impact that that day, and just, just, just to feel, you know. Are there? Have you started to write any of your own pop songs then? Yeah. Yeah? I actually wrote a song um, maybe last year. If I can remember, it'd be like, it's a party on the block. It'd be like, it's a party on the block. It's a party on the block. I can't really think of it. I can't really, I can't really go off hand, but I do got my music on SoundCloud. You know, I do have music on SoundCloud. You know, Is it I, under band amount on there? Yep, it's actually under C6, C-E-S-I-C, when I was younger. Um, so you can, uh, you can go ahead and check it out on SoundCloud. I got plenty of music on, uh, my order SoundCloud, www.soundcloud.com slash C-E-S-I-C. And that's actually my order music. If you want to actually find me, you can find me under that name. Um, and that music is kind of like the older me changing it into band amount. I kind of transitioned into, uh, I feel like a different me. So it was just like. Um, when you look on another SoundCloud, which is www.soundcloud.com slash bandamount, B-A-N-D-A-M-O-U-N-T. If you looked that up, if you looked that up on the SoundCloud, that's actually my original one right now that I'm working under. So 
all my upcoming music I'll be uploaded onto that one. Nice. Um, so when did you like start to? Why did you change your name? Um, let me see. I guess it was kind of because when I came down to moving to Detroit, I came here and um, I was introduced to a rapper, well-known rapper named Cash Kid, and um, I changed my name because I was going under the rap name as Seasick. And my video uh, production name was Bandamount Pictures, and everybody was just calling me under my video production name, Bandamount. Okay. So it kind of failed off after that. I was like, okay, everybody know me as Bandamount. You know, I'm kind of big for that name. So let me just, you know, show them a Bandamount story, you know? Yeah. So, okay. No, I totally get that. You got to go where everybody's calling you. Like, yeah. Plus, well, it's easier to balance one name as well and not two. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you were interested, well, being interested in pop music, have you ever thought about getting into electronic music, like EDM stuff? Mm, that would be more of something that I would have to listen to to actually have a feel and, fits and say. I would. Um, you, you should know. look up an artist after this called Galantis. If you like pop music, mm -hmm. it's a good way to be transitioned into EDM. I would say. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. That's something I'll definitely have to tap into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you make your own beats and things like that as well? Uh, no, I actually don't. Nope. Um, okay. I, I have a, a cousin that makes beats, and he actually is uh, famous. He's well-known. Uh, he's a big-time producer by the name of uh, the Honorable C-Note. Uh, he makes a lot of beats for um, a lot of well-known artists, so uh, I got a few beats by him. Uh, I might need to call him to give me some, you know, yeah. <laughs> good, good original beats. But other than that, I usually get a lot of um, a lot of beats uh, from Lansing. I get a lot of Elmo beats. Um, uh, what are a lot of Elmo, Elmo beats? beats? Uh, he he, he another produ uh, production team. He actually do a uh, production too. Okay. Yep. Another another uh, another producer up in Lansing. Yeah. Okay. Also, uh, let me see. Uh, J Beats get beats from my boy J Beats. Uh, Mula Mula beats. You know, yeah. Oh yeah, and Killer Dane, man. Killer Dane beats, for sure. Dang. So you just spread quite. Do you have people ever come feature on your? Yep, I, I do. Got uh, plenty of features. Yep, I yep. got um, I got my boy uh, Boo Skrilla, uh, Skrilla the Flair. You know, I got him. Uh, that's my man's. Uh, he part of my team. Um, who else? Uh, you know. I got uh, a few features. My boy Savage Don, uh, Lil L. Um, you know. Damn. Are these all in Detroit or also in Lansing as well? I'm both mixed in. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, do you travel back and forth between Lansing quite a lot then, or do you just stay down in Detroit now? Uh, I stay down in Detroit and go in between. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So what brought you down? So did you just move down here a month and a half ago then? Or have you been down in Detroit for a while? Nope, I've been down here for, uh, I've been down here in Detroit for about uh, two years now. Okay. And then you just moved into Alden then? Yeah. Nice. What brought you to Alden? Um, what really brought me here, um, probably just the scenery, you know. <laughs> oh, dude, that back patio. Have you gone out to the river yet? No, nah, no, not no, not not yet. Oh, dude, you can get right next to the river. <laughs> like it's hype. This place is quite beautiful. It sucks because it's like, well, yeah. it's like it doesn't suck actually. You know, it's pretty good for the money. It's just a few things fall off every now and then. But <laughs> yeah, I kind of like it because it's like a college campus. Kinda yeah, like, yeah the college campus. There's just so many people in this whole building. It's yeah, so it's wild. Thousands. Thousands. <laughs> They've got, like, people living in the hallways, like, mm -hmm. you know, just <laughs> making any apartment happen. I swear to God, like, those mirrored um, windows you'll see mm -hmm. when you're walking down, you think they're mirrors. I swear to God, those are, like, windows for the people that live there. Yeah, I'm definitely going to shoot a music video on the side. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever gone down into the basement? Nope. Oh, it's so scary. Yeah, I got to go down. I might, <laughs> I might have to shoot a video. That's another video. You know, I'm going to shoot like three videos in here. Nobody even going to know who. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the front lobby is so wild as well. It's just like straight out the 1920s. Yeah. Yeah, Greg Gatsby looking ass. 
<laughs> oh, so um, with your filming, you said you've worked with quite a lot of artists, some pretty big name artists. Why would you like some of your favorite people to work with? Um, I, I, I've shot artists for uh, Slim Jesus. I shot one of his music videos. Um, I did a live video, a music video for a live music video. I was on stage with him and um, shot a music video for Fetty Wap. Um, I did something for DC Young Fly, and that kind of took off my uh, name because he gave me a shout out. Well, they all gave me a shout out. And, um, yeah. But when he didn't give me that shout out, and it kind of uplifted me on YouTube, and that kind of helped my name. Nice. Um, let me see, man. I, I work with a lot of people on stage with everybody in Detroit that you can think of, every artist you can think of. Um, Cash Kid, he was one of the people that helped my name out. Um, and the whole 5674. Yeah, yeah, 5674 uh, was in there. So, What's one of your favorite venues to record at? Uh, venues. Like, have you recorded you at wanna, St. You Andrews or... Oh, um, let me see. Um, like when you're doing these live show recordings, right? Because like that's what Fetty Wap and DC Young Fly. Oh, okay. Um, no. Nah, um, it was actually in um Lansing. It was a downtown uh music festival. Oh, okay. Yeah, a music festival. Yep, yeah, that I was paid for. Nice. That's hype. You got paid to do it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fucking hype. I was the only cameraman on stage. Really? Yeah. All the other cameraman was off the stage. I was the only cameraman on stage. You know, one of the uh. Fuzzy, one of the Fetty Wise managers, I was, I was talking to Fuzzy, and he gave me the permission to be on stage with him. And I was on stage with Side Baby. If everybody knows Side Baby, you may pull up with a stick. You know, I was cool with him, too, on the stage. They let me uh, get on there, turned up on there. Uh, you know, it was real live, that It was real live. I saw, yeah. I, it, was, it, was so, how, how, it was so many artists, that? I can't really even think of um, like, everybody. Because they had to do with, like, an hour-long set, right? Mm, no, nah, I'd about, I say about a good 20 minutes. Okay. 20 minutes a piece, maybe 30. Okay. It might have been an hour, though. You know, it, 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 it was quick when everything's exciting. So, you know, <laughs> it could have yeah. been. How was it being on stage during those sorts of shows? Uh, it, it, it was um, it was like a different feeling, you know. It, it made me feel more, more, you know, energized to keep going with this rapping that I do because yeah. it's just like I see all these people that, I'm trying to become, and they on stage, and you see all these people out here cheering for them and understanding what they what they book is, because I want people to understand my story. So everybody understanding their book. So it just to see all that and to see everybody's eyes, it just was like, man, I, I gotta live this life. I, I got to. So it was just a good motivation. Nice. That's fucking hype. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you just do this twenty four seven? Then is this your main job right now? Yep, um, yeah, uh -huh. that's all I do right now. Um, shoot videos and uh, as an artist, yeah. And I also uh, want to get into, I'm, I'm branching into shoot music, uh, mu movies, and also getting into movies. I'm also an um, actor as well. Okay, all right. When did you get into acting? Uh, I'd say about three years ago. I've actually been in a couple of short films of my own. Really? Yep. Did you write the script and everything? Um, yep, I didn't really write it off. I just free, kind of free, freestyled it from here, but I told the script off okay. and um you can actually watch it on youtube um it's called yo unk y-o-u-n-c and you can find it on youtube it's probably about about 10 minutes long how long is it uh about 10 minutes yeah okay so it's a nice little short film yeah, mm -hmm. real nice. Yep, it's a funny f short film. It's a comedy film, so it's gonna have you uh, rolling. You're gonna have to actually watch <laughs> part one and part two. Um, what would you say the theme of it is, or is it just? Um, it kind of reminds me more of uh, Friday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, where w can we find that ad again? Just on YouTube. Yep, you can um, find it on YouTube. Um, y o u n c yo unk. It's called Yo Unk, and you can find that under Band of My Pictures, B A N D A M O U N T Pictures, on YouTube as well. It's gonna say Yo Unk, Band of My Pictures. You should be able to find it. Nice. Hell yeah. How many people did you have in it? Um, I actually had uh two, uh, one of my fr uh, two of my friends, which was uh, uh Nephew Woods, uh, which is uh Nephew Woods and Jeremy, 
my, my boy Jern. Yeah. Jern funny. Jern, Jern bass. Yeah. So do you, um, what is it? Um, were you acting in this as well? Yeah. Okay, nice. So it was the three of you acting. Yeah. Who was helping you film? Uh, my boy Jern, girlfriend. He had a girlfriend who was helping me just hold the camera. I was trying to explain to her exactly what to do, and she was catching on to it and just helping us. Nice. Have Do you use, like, a steady cam or, like, a stabilizer cam? No, nope. I use a DSLR. Okay. Yeah. But, like, do you have any f- cool gadgets, like, you know, that balances um, them out? I actually just bought a DJI Ronin. Um, you know, the it's a DJI Ronin uh, gimbal. Three in. Okay, so it is three access. Yeah, right. it's a, but I never used it yet. So I, don't, I so back then I was just actually just holding the camera. So this would be my first time ever using it. Wow. So what kind of DSLR were you using? Cause like I have a Canon T3i. Oh, a G a G7, a Lumix G7. Okay. Yeah. How did you like it? Um, it, it's pretty good. Okay. I, I, it's good. Uh, I started off with a um, T5i. T5i, yeah, but I started off with the Canon T5i. Nice. And when I did the Canon T5i, it was mainly more of the pictures that was coming out good. Uh, the videos was coming out okay. Mm-hmm. But when I transitioned to a mirrorless camera, that's when it started being more effective with the audience and it started being a different look. So is Luminex specifically good for video? Uh, Yeah, it's for, uh, both ways. I, I feel like the pictures do good too because they shoot in 4K. Okay. You know, 4K pictures and 4K video is going to be better, better than um, 1080 um, in some ways, mm-hmm. especially videos. Well, yeah. I mean, if people can rock 4K, it just looks so much better. And seeing that, like, those kind of quality shots makes all the difference in a mu- music video, I feel. Yeah. Uh, they say that by the end of the year, we're supposed to get into 6K. So hopefully... Um, wow. Hopefully we get into 6K. Hopefully that wasn't a rumor because 6K would be... A nice um, transition, you know. We probably <laughs> we probably won't be actually seeing six K. You probably be actually seeing four K because we still haven't got to that yet. We still on ten eighty. Yeah. So hopefully they'll just you know start letting us watch four K. Yeah, I know a lot of a lot of hardware out there can't support more than ten eighty p right now. Anyway, mm-hmm. like I'm pretty sure my commu- computer monitor, com- wow, computer monitors can only support ten eighty p. At like a certain rate per second, but not that high. Hmm. Like, I did not buy anything fancy, and that's what most people are doing. So, right. how do you feel about that? When like it's most of, I would say some of your viewers' technology lags behind. Like, how do you do you feel that as a challenge when you're putting out content? Um. Well, uh, I just. I, what do you mean? Like, uh, like not that. Does it? Okay, maybe I worded that wrong. Yeah, hold on. Boom, here it is. Like, you know, my my cell phone can't support 4K. How do you feel that as, like, a challenge going forward when some of most oh, viewers' yeah, the, technologies um, are lacking behind in some of the quality you're putting out there? Yeah, because the, the quality of it, when I, when I edit the videos and uh, when I actually get them done and rendered, the look doesn't look the same when it converts either back to um, either Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. It's always going to downgrade. Yeah. Even um, it's it just because of the, I guess the, I think they do something to the data mm-hmm. of the um, of the files. I think they so. have to try and reduce it, just drop down the quality as low as possible so it loads faster. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they just need to. They are well. They know what they need to do. <laughs> Google is t- t- what ten, twenty years ahead of us or something. <laughs> Dude, Instagram's my favorite social media platform. I feel. Yeah, yeah, I'm Instagram. Not, yeah, I'm not a big fan of like Facebook. I just use that for communication purposes. Like, yeah, there yeah, wasn't yeah, so yeah. many like different groups to be in, like. Because I do it with my comedy. It's like there's one specific page you should be watching. If you're in it, and it's like you just get all a bunch of shows from there, find out about new and upcoming open mics, current open mics as well. So yeah, Facebook is more drama. Yeah, you know, you got uh, Instagram is more you know business matters, people more professional, you know, yeah, and more to the money. I don't really use my Twitter anymore. I deleted all my old tweets. I was like, I'm just getting rid of all of these. Said some. 
silly things back in the day. I'm like, God damn it. Like, why? <laughs> like, 18-year-old me was not thinking. <laughs> and then you hear about all these, like, you know, artists out there getting in trouble now. It's like, fuck. Like, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but, so... Hmm. Is there anything more you wanted to talk about? Mm. Well, I got a mixtape that's going to be dropping. Let me uh, state yeah. that. Um, yeah. I got a mixtape that's going to be dropping. It's going to be called A Band of All Let's Shoot em, Volume 1. Um, it's going to be an album I'm going to have on iTunes, Spotify, and uh, really everywhere that you can fa- find any platform. <laughs> so uh, I would appreciate if everybody just tune in and tap in and just uh, basically, you know, get that. <laughs> Yeah. Download it. I really got something to say to everybody, a story to tell. How many songs you got on it? So far, I got about 11. Um, wow. But um, I'm going to be done with the whole project within the next, i say, three weeks to a month. Oh, yeah. Are you so, just doing this all in your own recording studio? Your, um, no? i say about the first, um, f- maybe four of the tracks I did in one of the recording studios here in LK Studios. And then the other, the other studio was Elmo and Lansing for the rest of the two. But um, other than that, all the rest will be uh, yeah produced by me. Nice. That's so impressive that you do your own producing, you write your own stuff, and then you film it all. Wow. You're a complete one-stop shop. Yeah. Only thing, well, I, I don't make my own beats. It's the only thing I don't do. I mix and master my own music, and um, okay, and I can record my own music. Um, you know, and then all the other stuff, of course, videos and editing. Do you ever have to pay for beats then? Um, uh, well, mm, some of the time my friends just give me it. Okay. And, um, uh, another, uh, some I just download off YouTube. Nice. So. That's hype. Do you have to, have to, like, shout them out during your songs? Like the ones you get off YouTube? Um, nope. <laughs> Not that I know of. <laughs> if I get big, I guess then <laughs> they gonna have to get some chip off that. But other than that, nah, they got their beats on YouTube and they know people gonna download it and use it. So nice. Got to stay step ahead of the game. All right. Um. So what other? So you talk about you planning volume two yet? Um, no, just actually volume one. Um, volume two, I don't really plan on until probably another year. Um, okay. But I do plan on doing other mixtapes. After volume one, um, I have not came up with the other name for the other mixtape, but I'm going to be planning on dropping another mixtape within a month, maybe after my first mixtape drop. Okay. Because I, I have over 170 songs recorded. And what? Out, yep. Since, I was, since I've been recording music, I have over 170 songs. And um, music video-wise, I have probably over... 40 music videos of my own. I've been shooting I've been shooting music videos before I start shooting music videos. So I've been shooting with um somebody named Fresh B when I was younger. And um yeah. How long does it usually take you to write a song? Mm, some songs could take me up to 30 minutes. Some songs could take me, you know, uh days where I can just take periodic times. Have you ever merged two songs together or a few songs together? Like different lyrics to um, make one. Yep, plenty of times. Um, I, I've done that. I even took off lyrics from one song that I actually made, and then never put out, and just put it onto another. Like threw some of them bars into some other stuff that I'm writing into, or I just make a whole song, and if I don't like it on a certain beat, I just go on YouTube and put on a whole bunch of other beats and rap it and see what flow I'm liking or how can I play with it. So how do you write? Um, well, when I was younger, I used to write just uh, with my pencil and everything. But now, you know, times change, so now I just use my phone. Okay, you do it all on your phone. Yeah. Um, have you ever tried Google Docs? Nah, I don't really try a lot of apps. Or, um, well, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really try too many apps. The only reason I use Notes is because I can send it straight to my Gmail or send it to other places. So if I lose certain stuff, then I still. We'll have it because some apps I used to use it would just you know 
crash. Yeah. Well, that was the thing I was about to say about Google Drive. It backs it all up. And, like, mm-hmm. we'll show you the different versions as, like, something progresses. Hmm. So you can go back and restore old copies if you want. Uh-huh. Like, that's what I do for a lot of my writing for comedy is all through, you know, Google Drive. So I'm able to access it anywhere. And then it's all completely backed up. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but 170 songs. Yeah. When did you start recording them all? Um, When I was around eight years old, around going on nine is when I first made my first song, I believe. I was young. I was real young. But How I, did I was you record always, that? Um, it was the A-Dad song that I made. I made that A-Dad song um, in the recording studio, and I was running with just one song for about two, three years just off of going on talent shows. You got into shows. a recording studio? Yep. Uh-huh. I don't really remember exactly who I, I was. I was younger. It was my mom who was mainly taking me everywhere because she believed in me a lot. So um, she used to take me to different places, and she took me to one spot that I don't even originally really remember, but I um, went in there, shot a music video. I mean, shot a um, shot um, the A Dad song in the studio. And when I uh, recorded, you shot the music video there too. Yep, it was a um, kind of like a, a you did this music at video. Nine years no, old? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't me who was shooting it. It was uh, somebody else. Yeah, but you did this all at nine years old. Yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. Fucking hustling. Yep, I was young. I was young. I still got the song when I was younger, but. So you were born in '93, then, right? Yeah. Nice. How was that? Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Boom. Are you, do you know your astrology sign? Um, or do you not do any? My Aries? Uh, you talking about the, um, yep, uh, Aries? Oh, you're an Aries? Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's hype. I'm a Cancer. I always mm-hmm. like. Yeah, my birthday coming up. Nice, yeah. You excited for that? Mm, not really. I'm getting oh. older. I mean, I got to even work even harder. Yeah. <laughs> you got nothing fun planned, though? Nah, nah, no, nope, not that I got up in my mind. My birthday is actually probably next week. <laughs> Nothing plan, just another day, I guess. So when you gonna get your mixtape out? Is that gonna be next week, or? Nah. Um, okay. On my birthday, I might release a video or something. That's why I want people to tap in because I release songs about every day. Like I'm releasing a song tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm releasing a song called um, "On Some Other Shit." So hopefully, you know, people tap into that. It's really um, something real for people who lost friends and family. Okay. Dang. Because the three songs you showed me were kind of like bangers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you try and keep it quite diverse with all your writing then? Yep, I kind of keep, I want to keep people oh yeah you moods, you know like the r&b stuff earlier yeah i want to keep people like when they listen to my music they can go to a certain track because it's feeling that certain way and they move like you know mm-hmm. i want to just do turn your different tempos in your you know vibe do you play any instruments um nope i used to i grew up playing the piano and the saxophone and the drums nice so i grew up in band class Yo, I've always wanted to play the piano. I think that's like the most universe, universal instrument there is out there. Like, Yeah, I used to play by ear growing up, so I could play a lot by ear. So wow. that, that kind of grew me from doing that as a younger age. It grew me now to be able to do a lot of stuff by ear, like even shoot music videos when I edit stuff or when I um, even doing my uh, recording in the studio for music. By ear, it just it just helps me. Wow, that's really impressive. I can't do anything by ear. I suck. Like this is so wild that you can play like an instrument just by listening to it. Yeah. When did you knew you had that gift? Um, uh, I kind of felt it. It's kind of like a feeling, I guess. Um, I kind of always loved music growing up. I watched Barney. I used to love, you know, when the songs come on. With uh, Barney and with all the, um, I forgot what it was. It was like a, uh, I don't know if you remember in class, it's called like a thing is Schoolhouse Rock. I think yeah. it's called, that's what it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. I used to watch that a lot and it was just music. I used to, that made me love music a lot. Nice. I, I always loved that stuff. Like it was always yeah. so hype. 
Thank Schoolhouse you. Rock. That's that. See, I'm gonna have to do something with that. I, I, that was, yeah, that that song <laughs> right there, Conjunction yeah. Johnson. That was one of my favorite songs. See, you gonna make me go in and remix some stuff. <laughs> Get after it. Bring people's minds up, and that's what the kids need to watch now is mm-hmm. stuff like that. I I wish they would play that stuff more. Yeah. Like that helped out a bunch of adults nowadays. I still hear people they talk don't play, about it. They don't play stuff like that at all. I wish they just, no. re, just rerun the old stuff. They might as well just rerun it. Now they just got Paw Patrol everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Making kids think other things. Dude, I don't know. I always find that so wild about kids nowadays. Just like growing up so... It's just so much exposure to things like that. We just got the internet when we were growing up, like really, and that was a wild thing to have. Now there's just like so much shit all over social media. <laughs> yeah. Kids are getting accounts at such a young age. Right. <laughs> oh man. But I also know a lot of people that aren't well deleting their accounts nowadays as well. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you'll ever delete yours? <laughs> My YouTube account? Nah, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, I still got my MySpace account. <laughs> do Do you really? Yeah. I do not know what mine is yeah. anymore. I hope it's gone. Yeah, I still got my MySpace. I got music on my MySpace account. You can go to myspace.com slash C-E-S-I-C. You can see the old 8-year-old, 10-year-old music. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, man. Well, <laughs> you got anything more you want to shout out? No. Nah? You good? Yeah. All righty. Well, thank you for coming on and doing this, man. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I really appreciate doing this. We did this straight off the cuff. This was not planned whatsoever. <laughs> no, no, no. This is giving people another outside look of my story. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to get it out there, man. We'll have to have you come on again soon. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. All right. Thank you, man. No doubt.